percent Well, what we have here is we have the difference in our return on capital investment from four and a half to thirteen percent. Okay. Now I'm just saying what carbon rate is required for a four and a half percent return. Okay. Here in this case, we I'm getting four and a half percent. I require eighty percent. Here I'm getting thirteen point three percent. So I have to bring that 90% down to some figure to bring the profitability down from 3.3% return to four and a half, which is about a third. It's about a third. What's the difference between this and this here? Yeah, yeah. And here, to do that, I'd have to get twins and triplets, 250%. To move four and a half to 13%, I'm getting 80% already. Yeah, what I'm saying is, you understand the differences here between those two. Um, I'm, because you said carving rate, fertility was the most important factor. I just want to put it in perspective. So if we try to increase, if we try to increase this system here to a 13.3%, we have to get 250% carving rate, not 80. But by increasing numbers, we can do that at a very lower carving rate. So to compete, we don't need a the cows are quite every third year, which is a bit difficult to achieve, unless you, unless you take the bulls out. So just to get in perspective, so you can put your own figures to that, go back home and on your computer, work it out. It's, it's a very important uh, uh, exercise to do to get into perspective that although fertility is very important, stocking rate is by far the more important factor determining profitability. A combination of high stocking rate and high fertility gives you these very high figures that you find here. And that's where you want to go to. Don't you also need the very efficient cows along with that stocking rate? That's I what, mean, you, you that's what you've got here. Yeah. That's what you've got here. Yeah. Right, okay. You don't have Brahmas weighing 660, have you? No. No, sir. Yeah, so it's a difference in, in the frame size that makes a big difference. So what we saw there is that what we're actually seeing here now the larger cow um, eats less relative to their size. So what does that mean? You poor body condition. The smaller cow eats more, so it's a better body condition. So what we have here is that the smaller frame animal, not necessarily the smallest cow, the smaller frame animal relative to the larger frame animal has an unfair advantage in terms of body condition. And the other way around, the large frame animal is genetically handicapped in terms of body condition. And that handicap is intake what you call relative intake. It's, it's a, um, a thing I've coined, relative intake. No one uses it, but it's very important to understand. So if you have a high relative intake and we can select for that, you have high body, good body condition. And the higher the relative intake is, the, the more efficient the grass conversion efficiency is. So it's a term we'll come to, uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later exactly how we get that. Why is the high stocking rate so much so important? So they consume everything, well, they knock it all down. You well, there's two things. One is that if you're in a situation like I started here, where I could double my stocking rate, that's here, because we had the grass available. If you go around here, you'll probably find in certain areas, I've seen it in Missouri, I've seen it in other parts, where the grazing is not 100% utilized. So what you get is grass is grazed selectively. And even if you take animals out of, out of a paddock, they come back after a month or three weeks or two months, they will graze selectively again. And they will graze those patches and those grasses that were previously grazed. And they will avoid the other grasses. Because the stock density and stock numbers are too low. Now, when you increase the stock numbers, in theory, there was enough grass for 300, uh, what is it here, 600 cows. But here we've increased the stock density. It minimizes that drop in performance. So we were, with that stock density of 1,000 paddocks, we won't have a drop to 67%. We will get a drop, but not to that extent there. So if you've got 1,000 acres and you've got one cow on it, that cow is going to produce very well. But in total, you're getting very little return. If you've got 1,000 cows on it, and you're only getting 30% carving rate, you're still making much more money. Don't you need to factor in the amount of workforce it's going to take to move those cows on 1,000 paddocks? A thousand cows and a thousand paddocks, one labor is enough. Work, work out that efficiency of labor usage. If you have a, if you have a structure in, in place right. that you can do the one you labor. Learn that, right? Yeah, you can do it.
I had one. I basically get one laborer <laughs> doing it. Okay. But you have to have the structure in place to do that. I just want to recap what we just uh, d uh, discussed previously before the break. Is the importance of stocking rate in determining launch profitability. <coughs> it is by far the most important factor in determining it. Although fertility is extremely important, the combination of both gives you a situation where you have these very, very high returns on your investment. And the problem in terms of business was, is that our investment in land is extremely high. So we have to somehow utilize that land better by increasing stocking rate and then combining that with cattle that have inherently good body condition. Okay, so what do we need to know now, to do now is how are we going to identify and how are we going to breed cattle that are efficient grass converters, be it for milk production or for beef production. We require cattle, we have to breed them and manage them to a certain degree to be able to efficiently convert X amount of grass into whatever product we're going to sell. So what I'd like you to do, have a look at, if you, on your, um, your notes there, you'll find this uh, figure there. What I'd like to do here is, I'm, looking at, I'm going to look at two variables that have an effect on grass conversion efficiency. One is the growth rate of an animal. And I've got this back into kilograms, so you'll have to just think in terms of kilograms. Kilograms here and daily gain here in terms of kilograms. 100 grams, 200, 300. In terms of growth rate, one variable. The other one is the size of the animal in kilograms. Those are two variables. Okay. So what the figures I've written in here in blue refer to the amount of energy, megajoules and metabolizable energy if you want to know the, the scientific term, the amount of energy required for a total of one kilogram of gain. So this figure here refers to a total of one kilogram of gain. When the animal is only gaining 0.1, it has to grow for 10 days to be able to gain a kilogram. So for 10 days, the energy requirement, which is in this figure here, is for a period of 10 days. These figures, the energy requirements come from nutritional tables that you find anywhere, on the internet and books. If you're a dairyman, you will understand that there's a certain amount of energy or protein or minerals required for a liter or a gallon of milk. Same with beef cattle. For a certain size animal and certain growth rate, required growth rate, there's a requirement in terms of energy. So those figures are available. I haven't sucked them out of my thumb. They're there. What I've done is just translated them into a kilogram of gain, total energy required for one kilogram of gain. So if you just look at that, uh, those figures, the higher the figure is, obviously the least efficient the animal is. And the smaller the figure is, the more efficient it is. Does everyone understand that? Forget what that figure means, it's just the amount of energy required. So it gives us an indication in terms of growth rate and size, what's most efficient. Now if we look at just growth rate, any individual animal, whether it's a small animal or a large animal, the faster that individual grows, the more efficient the growth is. I mean, there's a very big difference here between 93 units required here and 500 there. For one kilogram of gain, that's a massive difference. Okay. So now, why is that? I'd like you to write in your notes here on the side there. There are four, three or four conclusions we can come to. The first conclusion is that the faster an individual animal gains weight, the more efficient the gain is. So the faster an individual animal gain grows, the more efficient that growth is. So growth rate is very important. The faster an, an individual animal grows, the more efficient the growth. Does that mean then that the fastest growing animal is the most efficient? The fastest individual animal gains are more efficient, but does that mean that the fastest growing animal in a herd is the most efficient? No. If you look, let's look at a growth rate of 0.5 kilograms. And we go across here for different size animals. What does that mean? It means that, that's the second conclusion we come to, at equal growth rate, the small animals are more efficient. At equal or similar growth rate, 
the small animals are more efficient or the large animals are less efficient any growth rate it's very important to understand this and if we do understand it correctly then we know how to devise a selection criteria that will identify the most efficient animals okay so what that means is that the question I asked was is the fastest grain growing animal the most efficient and everyone said no so what does that mean? Uh, larger one, or depends on how much he's eating. What does it mean? If, 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 uh, if it, the, the feed gain ratio is higher, it's less efficient, right? If it takes 10 pounds to gain a pound of one and four pounds to gain a pound of the other. Okay, but why is the uh, fastest gaining animal not the most efficient? No. What it means is, and I'll come back to that a little bit later, I, I, I forgot something very important to tell you. What that means is that there's a required growth rate in terms of size for equal efficiency. In other words, the, the, because we saw that at similar growth rates, the larger animals are less efficient. So that means that the larger animals have to grow faster to be equally efficient. So there's a required growth rate in terms of size for equal efficiency. I'll come to that just now. What I forgot to uh, answer here is that wh what you forgot to answer me, the question is, why is an animal more efficient the faster it grows? What's the reason for that? The faster an individual animal grows, grows or gains weight, the more efficient that growth is. What is the reason for that? Same animal. Shorter time to feed them. Yes, that's true. What, what does that relate to? Sorry? Yeah. If you look at this figure here of 250, that's a total requirement for 10 days. In other words, the requirement per day is 25 units of energy. If an animal ingests 25 units of energy, it'll grow in 0.1 kilogram. Of that 25 units of energy, 22 is used for maintenance, for zero growth. So if we had another factor of zero, it would be 22 units. Now, if we multiply that by 10, 220 units of the 250 goes into maintenance. That's why it's inefficient. Whereas here, when it's gaining 0.1 kilogram a day, it still requires 22 units for maintenance, but it's got an excess of 38 units for growth. And that's why it gains 1 kilogram. Does anyone understand that? Here, we have to... Uh, because the, the daily gain is 0.1 kilogram, we require a total of one kilogram. So it has to get fed for 10 days at a certain level to be able to gain one kilogram of gain. Okay, so the, the 250 units here refers to a total of one kilogram of gain which is acquired over 10 days. So daily requirement is 25 units. That's a daily requirement. Of that 25 units, 22 go into maintenance. If instead of getting 25 units of energy, I only got 22, it would gain zero. There wouldn't be any growth. That's essential, but it's, it's, it doesn't put anything in our pocket. Here, where the animal is gaining one kilogram, it is gaining one kilogram because of the 22 units, which is for maintenance, there has an excess of 38 units, and that goes into growth. So here you only have one day of maintenance required, here you have 10 days of maintenance required. So that means that there's a required growth rate in terms of size for equal efficiency. And what is that required growth rate? Remember you have animals of different size in any herd. So in your cow herd you've got probably about a 50% difference in size. At least 30% between your smallest cow and your largest cow. So we have to take it into consideration when you select you can't just select the fastest growing animal because the fastest growing animal is not necessarily the most efficient. Okay, this animal gaining one kilogram requires 108 units. Its efficiency is 108 units for a kilogram of gain. This animal gaining 
is much more efficient. So the fastest gaining animal is not necessarily the most efficient animal. So there's a requirement in terms of size and growth rate for equal efficiency. It sounds very complicated, but once you understand it, it's very simple to understand. Now, what is that relationship? I'd like you to have a look here. Uh, three figures in terms of size. 200, 300, 400, 500. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Would you agree those figures there relate to equal efficiency? Okay. So 200, 300, 400, 500. The requirement is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So what is the requirement in terms of growth for different sized animals for equal efficiency? Well, the bigger animal is better gain a lot faster. The bigger animal has to, grow, has to gain more, yes. Okay, what is, the, what, is the, what is the requirement? If it's 50% larger, what does it have to do? If it's 50% larger, it has to go 50% faster or weigh 50% more at any given time. Let's look at it again. 200.2, 300.3, 400.4, and 500.5 is a direct relationship. It's a direct relationship. It's 100% correlation between size and required growth rate. Let's look at another simple example here. Here you have 150 kilogram animal gaining 0.4, and that's the efficiency. Now, without me looking, I will tell you that a 300 kilogram animal has to gain 0.8 to be equally efficient. 300 is double 150, 0.8 is double 0.4. There it is there. So there's a direct relationship. It's very important for you to understand this. So I'll take time and I'll explain and I'll go through different. So if one is twice as big as the other, it's better than If it's frame size twice, it has to go twice as fast. That's, the, that's what these figures show us. Not what I've said. I've seen it. But now I can, I can explain it, what the reason is. Now in a cow herd, what would be the... A cows are the same age. What would be the variation in size? We're talking about pounds, and, and it might be a little bit misleading. Uh, pounds and kilograms in terms of frame size. Uh, but it's the only way I can relate to it and make you understand. You follow. But we're actually talking about frame sizes. So if you have a frame size that's, that relates to twice the weight, then that animal has to go twice as fast or weigh twice as much at any given age. Now, in a cow herd, what do you say is the variation in size in terms of pounds, but that's frame size, between your smallest cow and your largest cow? If you have a cow size in your herd, we'll say 1,000 pounds, what would your largest cow weigh and what would your smallest cow weigh? 1,200 pounds? Largest? 800 smallest? What's the difference between 800 and 1,200? 50%. So what it means is that the progeny from the 1,200 pound cow has to go 50% faster or weigh 50% more at any given age than that from the 800 pound cow. That's a massive difference that's never taken into account. So by not taking that into account, all we've done is we've selected the faster growing animals assuming they're more efficient. But they're not necessarily more efficient. Because size is a factor that is not considered. We have to take size into consideration. The smaller cow's cat would probably be a higher percentage of her body weight than the big cow. At weaning. Yes, it will be. Because she takes in more relative to the size than the larger cow. So she's automatically more efficient. But in terms of, it looks more efficient, but in terms of gross conversion, they, they might be the same. So the larger car doesn't have to weigh a, a calf so much heavier in terms of gross conversion efficiency. The problems arise after that when it comes to body condition. Can you understand that a progeny from a 1,200 pound car has to gain 50% faster or weigh 50% more at any given age and an 800 pound cow's progeny to have similar body condition. Does anyone understand that? And that's where the problem arises. Sorry? Well, I wouldn't look at it that way. I think that I look at it differently. Uh, okay, so let me, maybe I'll ask you a question if I explain this way. 
three things. Firstly, an animal, individual animal, the faster it grows, the more efficient it is. Secondly, at similar growth rate, the larger animals are less efficient or the smaller animals are more efficient. And there's a direct relationship between required growth rate and size. In other words, an animal that is 50% larger has to go 50% faster or weigh 50% more at any given age. Okay, that is the requirement. Now, what is the problem? They won't do it. Why? No. The intake. The relative intake of a larger cow is smaller than that of a uh, small cow. In other words, although a cow has to grow in proportion to her size, she cannot eat and just grass in proportion to her size. And that is a problem. Because the requirement in terms of intake is a factor uh, of size, a function of size that becomes smaller relative to size the larger the animal. Am I confusing you? It's very simple. Although animals have to grow in proportion to the size to be equally efficient, they cannot eat in proportion to the size. And that is the problem. So, large frame cattle are genetically handicapped. And that is the handicap. Small frame cattle have an unfair advantage. And that is the unfair advantage. But through our selection criteria we're using, we are favoring a large frame animal as opposed to a small frame animal. Because you're looking at absolute growth rate and not a relative growth rate. We have to consider relative growth rate as a measure of efficiency and not absolute growth rate. This is why the industry likes big cows because they want to feed them grain, right? Well, you see what happens is, there's another fact that we haven't talked, discussed yet. Every pound of gain that has a higher percentage of fat in it requires more energy. How, how do we measure efficiency of, of, of conversion? Feed gain. feed gain. Okay. Now tell me, if you have animals of varying, uh, let's, let's talk about maturity. In other words, you have early maturing animal. We're talking about physiological maturity, fatness. Early maturing animal and a late maturing animal. It might be the same breed, it might be different breeds. Which animal, if you put it on a feed test, whether it's on grass or in a feedlot, um, stores more energy per pound of gain? Excuse me. Because there's more fat per pound of gain. Okay. So what are we doing? We are discriminating an animal that's very efficient, but it's putting on body fat as opposed to mean, leat, and water. And that is why if you have a gain test, on average, there are variations, but on average, the fastest growing animals will be in the category of those ones that aren't putting on fat. So a pound of gain, a pound of feed and a pound of gain, they are so-called more efficient, but they're not more efficient. It's a mathematical mistake we're making. How can we compare apples and pears? So the food intake is exactly the same energy-wise whether you're feeding a small animal or a larger animal, early maturing or later maturing. The feed intake, the energy content of the feed is exactly the same, but the energy content of the output is not the same. You follow? It's a mathematical mistake. You can't compare it that way. There's not efficiency. If you compared uh, the energy content per pound of feed and energy content per pound of gain, there wouldn't be a difference. The small animals would be equally efficient will be equally efficient equally. in the feedlot. You said per pound of gain, and you say uh, per pound of energy. Now I said the energy in a pound of gain. Energy in a pound of feed and energy in a pound of gain, efficiency would be equal. You don't understand? No, you're losing me. Well, no, the fat, fat is like 2.25, as much energy as a... That's right. Gasoline. Yes, that's right. Do we understand that a pound of fat meat is a pound to, as opposed to a pound of lean meat? The fat meat has much more energy stored in it. Does anyone agree with that? Way less. No, it's a pound. Energy stored. There's more energy in fat than lean meat and water. So the higher the fat content of a pound of meat, the higher energy 
is stored in a pound of meat. So if there's high energy in a pound of meat, the requirement for that pound of gain is higher in terms of energy. So less efficient. They're not less efficient. If it takes more energy. No, that takes more energy. It takes the same amount of energy. The, the problem arises we measuring efficiency incorrectly. We're measuring a pound of feed and a pound of gain. Now a pound of gain for a lean animal requires less energy. So they are going to be so called more efficient. Say that, a, pound of feed. Say that again. a pound of feed and a pound of gain for a lean animal. For a lean animal? Yeah, a pound of gain, there's less energy stored. So it seems more efficient because you require less feed for a pound of gain. But that pound of gain stores less energy. Because it's storing lean meat. Yes, not fat. Okay. Well, you see that when you look at the cost of gain. If you're finishing cattle, they're getting fatter. They, they, the bigger they get, the closer they get toward being finished, the more expensive the gain. Exactly. Is because the conversion, the that's conversion right. drops off. Yes. The rate of that's so right. So what? The consumption, the consumption keeps going up. Yes. Yeah. The so that's that's the reason. So we're measuring it. In a, we're not measuring it correctly. You follow. So that is why. Those, those cattle are so-called more efficient. And if you put them in a feedlot and you only measured the, the gain, they would be more efficient because they're putting on less energy, the pound of gain. That's the reason. Now, what is the most important factor determining, apart from stocking rate, determining profitability of a cow-calf operation? Apart from stocking rate, what's the most important factor or trait or characteristic required by cows? <coughs> Pregnancy. Okay. Now, what determines pregnancy? Well, so exactly. So, what are we doing? On the one side, we're taking animals with low inherent body condition, and we require high inherent body condition, which we don't have. So, what do we do? We have to feed them more. We have to feed them more, and we have to carry less of them so they can graze selectively. In that sense, there is, yes. But I believe that a, a, a productive, uh, genetically productive range animal, you can still put in the feedlot, but if you have to put in the feedlot, it'll only be in for a very short period of time. But there's definitely a conflict, what you're saying, between genetically what you require for the feedlot and what you require for the range. But the cost of gain per pound would be much less if we could put more on the grass and just finish that. Oh, exactly. So the, for me, the, the, the problem is the feedlot industry, not us. We, we are sharing that problem because we, we've, we've just followed what they're saying. I'm not saying there shouldn't be feedlots. I'm saying if we've got efficient range cattle, we would lead, need far less feed to fatten them if we had to fatten them in a feedlot. We can fatten them on, on grass. Okay, but what? If I'm, a, if I'm a, a, a packer, if I'm a packer, uh, it costs cost me three hundred fifty dollars to kill a twelve hundred pounder, three hundred fifty dollars to kill a six hundred pounder, and I'm getting twice as much meat. Yeah. So what you're saying? So what you're saying? You're being discriminated against at the end in product. What I'm saying is you're going to make much more money starting off. That, dis that, th that little bit that you're going to lose the end product is, is nothing compared to what I'm going to gain. I'm prepared to take that loss. Not a problem. Because I'm going to make much more. As a cow cat? Right? Yes. And if I, had, if I had stockers, all you require is to have many more of them. If we can increase our stocking rate, you can carry them for a shorter period of time. You can fatten them on the grass, or you can put them in the feedlot for a very short period of time. So the whole industry will be far more efficient. 